Okay, so let's get the meeting underway. Uh, welcome to the members that attended and the one person who is a non-member who is observing. Uh, let's begin with bylaws amendment proposals. Do we have to begin with that, or what about the, the chairs? Should that be done first? Uh, we can do that at the end. Unfortunately, I forgot to print out copies of the bylaws, but Ian, you've got to pull it in front of you. I do have the bylaws. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. if you want to run here, uh, if you've got a smartphone or tablet, um, you can I just have a on nhliberty.info. So, what I'm, one thing that I would like to propose is in Article 2, it says that. Membership shall be renewed. Uh, yeah, uh, Article 2, Section 3, all members shall renew their membership in writing or via electronic means at the beginning of each calendar year. I would motion that we amend this to say before the end of the annual convention. Uh, should it be like between the beginning of the calendar year and before the end of the convention? Yes. Okay. So let me... So what's the logic behind yearly renewal? Well, the idea is to keep the membership rules fresh. Okay. Because, you know, like, if Massachusetts says they have 200 libertarians, how many of them have moved? How many of them are, you know, still paying attention? How many of them care? Yeah. Um, and it's still an outreach to current members to remind them to renew. By yes, we do that. A reminder email gets sent uh, near the end of the year. So we have around 30 members at the end of the year, if I'm recalling correctly, Daryl. Yes. And so we are down to about 15 now. So it keeps uh, keeps the membership rolls fresh with people who are serious about being involved. And as you can see, you know, it's a good thing. If we had kept the numbers, we have a requirement that 10% of the members attend this convention. Oh, yeah. So it would also make it more and more difficult to actually end up having a convention. It's pretty difficult right now. Yeah. It's, it's, so uh, this convention is uh, pretty much everything on the table, full form could reach for any changes to the platform. Platform cannot be changed without 100% of everyone. And it's 100% of everyone? 100% of voting members of the convention. At the convention. So is this at the convention? It is. Okay, so if all of us agreed to a change in platform, we could theory. In theory, yes. Although, generally, the party is intended to not ever have a platform change. Right. Okay, so we proposed a wording for Article 2, Section 3, is now all members shall renew their membership in writing or via electronic means between January 1 of each calendar year and the end of the annual convention. So the Why the end of the convention is supposed to be there? What it has to be the of the convention. Well, in case somebody shows up and then you know we start the convention while they're still filling out their renewal form. Okay. So, uh, but we can change it to the beginning. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, it would make more sense. Yeah. Uh, we can as as we delayed the meeting today, we could still delay the meeting. Right. The meeting. Okay, so between January 1 of each calendar year and the beginning of the annual convention. That works. I'll second that motion. And is there any discussion on the proposal? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no one, so. Are you editing that uh, on, are you editing that on the website right now? No, I've got a text document, and you're gonna and I will edit. So, is this the annual convention? This is it? Yes. It happens every year at the Liberty Forum. Okay. Ian, you had a proposal that you would like to make. I do have a proposal. The proposal is that right now, with the rule, and let me pull it up here, on the bylaws about attending this convention yes. and having a quorum. Rule 3 under Article 5 says quorum at the annual convention of members shall be three-fifths of the entire state committee. I didn't know that we were calling ourselves the state committee. <laughs> the state committee. Yeah. 
that's the term that we have in Article 3. That's what every other political party calls it. Yeah. Uh, so that's me and Daryl in this case, because Conan is our third, which would make us three-fifths, of the entire state committee and 10% of the membership of the New Hampshire Liberty Party. Uh, uh, any member who is unable to physically, or any member of the state committee who is unable to physically attend may teleconference into the convention. So the issue that we had today was that at the beginning of the time when the convention was supposed to begin, we didn't have a quorum. Thankfully, you guys showed up and made it possible. I um, but the thing, the point uh, that I wanted, the proposal I want to make uh, is that the New Hampshire Liberty Party allows membership from outside of New Hampshire, and so odds are that if we get a bunch of members from you know other places, right now there's one in Utah and another one in D.C. and another one in Kentucky. So that, that brings the number up larger and make it harder to get that 10% to have the quorum. So my proposal would be to change it to, I don't have the exact terminology, but to change it to 10% of New Hampshire-based members of the party rather than 10% of the full party membership. So I guess the textual proposal would be and 10% of the membership of the NHLP or of the NH base membership of the NHLP. And probably we'd be going off the address list they've given. The address that they've given. Whatever's on record. Okay. So someone could update their address right before the convention as well. Right. So I'm sorry, what were you going to say? I was actually just to make the exact same solution. Okay, so it now says uh, blah, 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 This is still just the proposal. And 10% of the NH-based membership of the NHLP and then in brackets, based on the address on file. That's my proposal. I second, second. I would go ahead and say we can call the question. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Not opposed. No, not anymore. So it's not to do
Because right. The party can still support someone without being nominated, right? Because it sounds like you can't nominate right. someone in between the convention, which doesn't make it. The, the, the members of the state committee, yeah. meaning the three co-chairs, could endorse a candidate. Any time? Was that? Any time, right? Any time. But could not officially nominate a candidate. So, so if, I didn't, if I didn't know at right now that I wanted to run for a governor against Maggie Hassan, if I didn't know that right now, then I would never be able to get the nomination for it. Right. And and that's pretty much that's flawed. Yeah. Well, and part of the reason is because the state system here in New Hampshire is flawed. Obviously, uh, so this is a requirement that we're given. It, it's not a requirement, but if you want to gather signatures, you need to begin early in the year. Yeah. And you know, you're putting the name of the political organization on the petitions. So, you know, if you want to make sure that you're going to get the requisite number of signatures, you need to begin early in the year. So, my question: What's the difference between a nominated candidate? Is this a meaningless difference? It's the same thing, or is there a real difference between the two? Uh, it might seem as though it's a difference without, or a distinction without a difference. Uh, officially, a nominated candidate is where the party is saying, this is the candidate that we are putting forth. Whereas an endorsed candidate is, we like this guy, but he's not on our party list. You can endorse a candidate who isn't even an NH party uh, member. Uh, no, they would have to agree to the membership. Or, uh, they, they would have to agree to the platform, <coughs> but they could be on a different. So if I party. decided to start running for governor tomorrow, as Ian said, uh, and I got the endorsement, obviously, could I then still put NH Liberty Party logo on my materials? Would that be possible, or would that be? With the endorsement, yes. Okay. Uh, but you know, obviously, endorsement would—it's a secondary level of support. Yeah. Where it's more, you know, showing support, but not an official 100% for backing the person. All right. So, for instance, I went and uh, I got petitions created, as you know, yeah. to in theory run for state senate this year as a New Hampshire Liberty Party candidate. Yeah. I could just write in whatever the fuck I want to there right. as far as what party I'm running for. I don't need to have you nominate okay. me to be the New Hampshire Liberty Party. Uh, so what would nomination do? Since we're not like a recognized party, does it even make a difference at this point whether we even nominate candidates? At this point, no. Should we have... It's more just a level of you know, showing official support. So, um, obviously, you should be able to nominate candidates during the annual convention, but my concern is that not enough people are going to know now in February right. whether or not they're going to run. Like, for instance, if I don't get enough petition signatures, I'm not going to run for state senate as right. an ex liberty party. Um, Being nominated doesn't mean that you can't withdraw or change your mind. Yeah. I guess my, my yeah, concern is... It's not a binding is, blood contract. Right, no, but my concern is if somebody wants to be nominated in May for running for whatever, state rep or something, then they can't be, right? They just can't be nominated by the... They could be endorsed. They could be endorsed, and, the, you know, as long as they're a member of the party, then, you know, we wouldn't tell them you can't put the party name on your ballot line. Mm -hmm. Okay. I move that in all co-chairs, I think I have the terminology right, all party co-chairs uh, endorse a, con a candidate, then they can become nominated um, outside of the convention. It's reasonable. Let's check the uh, three section seven process to see how it goes. So, Daryl, for endorsements, um, all it says in Article 3, Section 7 is that no candidate shall be endorsed by the state committee who is not a member of the party. Um, right. So, but do we require, there doesn't seem to be clear if we require 100%. I presume we would to endorse a candidate. We would probably need 100% of the state committee to make an endorsement. Be my 
No, we we'll, we'll just be a majority. Oh, we're, does it make that clear anywhere? Uh, what kind of majority? Is it this like a general? Well, there, there's three members of the state committee, so the two of the three. So if for some reason I'm like, I don't know about this guy, you know, even though he says he supports the platform, I'm not necessarily going to vote to endorse him. Ian and Conan could still... Well, just put that in, like, at least two or three or three or three. Yeah, so I think we should rewrite um, section, Article 5, Section 6 uh, to incorporate Andrew's suggestion that the... Hello! There is no Darren Tappan here. No, Darren Tappan. So the, to incorporate the suggestion that um, candidates could be nominated by the executive committee anytime. Is that yeah, with right? unanimous consent. Yeah. Do they keep this? Sure. Okay. And I don't have a problem with it being a unanimous as opposed to a majority. I okay. think that if, if we're going to be endorsing someone, right. we're going to be. If someone's that controversial for something like this, they're probably might should get endorsed. <laughs> Controversial people like two of the board members support one another. Maybe a little. Yeah, a lot of people are going to be able to do that. Yeah, nobody's going to use this, so we're going to. Okay, members of the HLPA nominate candidates.
second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Ian abstains. Uh, I am considering very, very strongly a run for Secretary of State, which is not a elected position as far as being elected by General Motors in New Hampshire. Could being, you be elected to Secretary of State and State Rep? I don't think those are no. no. Those are conflicting huh. positions. So, I, I could certainly run for both since Secretary of State's not on the ballot. But you're saying if you won state rep, you would not be able to do Right. Like, I could nominate myself. Uh, and then I think I would need two other people to second the nomination. And then that would force a vote for Secretary of State. Oh, wait, wait. If you, ran, if you won as state rep, you could then run for Secretary of State? How do they get Because the it's the state reps that nominate and elect the Secretary of State. But would you just abstain from the nomination process? No, I would be the one to nominate myself. Why would I abstain from... Because if I am assuming that I were somehow miraculously elected as a state rep, then unless I nominated myself, the chances are Bill Gardner would be the only person nominated. Because you wouldn't be able to get any other... And then the clerk, I don't know, I haven't contacted any yet. I am waiting to see how many are filing to run for re-election. So if you don't... I've heard that several might not be running again. If you don't win state rep, then you would still need someone to nominate. Yes. So, so I plan on... a state rep. Yes. That's what, so you're planning on what? I'm planning on as soon as the filing period, you know, looking to see who I can contact. Those people that are either running again or people that have a chance of getting elected. And I'm trying to find some state reps to nominate me. <laughs> so what would you like to be nominated for the Secretary of State? That is where I am going with this, yes. I'd nominate you for the Secretary of State. Yeah, I would like to say, um, I mean, obviously, you know, like, all right, all right. Yeah, these are guys. Any right. comments or shall we vote? All in favor of Daryl for Secretary of State? Unanimous. Any more? Well, do you want to be nominated for because we do that. He hasn't decided. I haven't decided if I'm running. Uh, because I, I'm not sure the, the, the number of signatures. No, it's not insurmountable, but it's definitely. And now you can still be nominated by the three uh, chairs. Right. Yeah, she's also running for 